I'm Bob Duhamel, and I have a rather interesting setup on my workbench here. I have 117 volts going into the primary of this transformer, which has a 12 volt secondary. I have that 12 volt secondary going to the 24 volt secondary of this transformer, and then I have my oscilloscope attached to the primary. Why would I be doing that? Well, I'm about to demonstrate how a times 10 probe works, and I need a high voltage to measure. You can measure the voltage of your mains with an oscilloscope, but you need to be careful. Remember, this is a true earth ground, and if you touch the ground of your oscilloscope to the hot wire of your mains, you're going to get sparks and smoke and all sorts of other undesirable things. And so just to keep things safe, I'm running my mains through these two transformers, stepping it down and stepping it back up. What that does is this transformer is maybe limiting me to four to six amps at the most. And when I step that back up, remember when you step the voltage up, your current capability goes down. And so I'm talking about maybe four to 600 milliamps on the output of this. So I can go ahead and uh, touch these wires together here and eh, get some small sparks, but nothing really to worry about. Oops. <laughs> so there is an accidental touch there. If that had been going directly to the mains, I would have had sparks and smoke and melted metal. And I don't want that. And also this is just a lot safer. So let's take a look at what we have on the oscilloscope here. And there's our problem. So our signal is going right off the scale here. So what can we do about that? Well, we can use a times 10 probe. So let me take this regular probe off and let's put in a times 10 probe. Now, these times 10 probes normally have a ground lead hooked up right here, and I could hook my ground and my lead right up there, but I took this off just to reduce the clutter. Well, I'm lying. I can't find it, but we can ground it another way. Let's, uh, hook this other probe here and I'll ground it through the ground wire there, and now let's hook up the times 10 probe, and we have the same thing. That's because the times 10 probe, if you look carefully, has a switch on it. It says times one times 10. So I'm going to flip that switch, and look what happened. So what the times 10 probe did is it reduced the input level so that I get a smaller display on the screen. It's reducing the voltage by 10, so what I need to do is remember to multiply this number by 10. So I have 5 volts per division, now it's 50 volts per division. So instead of being 40 volts from the bottom to the top, now it's 400 volts from the bottom to the top. So what I see here, let's go ahead and ground that just to double check where it's centered, and let's measure our voltage. So it's 50 volts per division, so there's 0 in the middle, and that's going to be 50 looks like just about 75 volts peak. So let's see what we have as an RMS voltage. We take 75 times 0 0.707, and that gives us 53 volts. That sounds about right because this is a 24 volt se secondary, and I'm only putting 12 volts in, so I'm getting uh, about half the voltage of the mains. So that's one purpose of a times 10 probe. That is when you need to measure a voltage that is too high for the oscilloscope to display. Another thing the times 10 probe does is it increases the input impedance of the oscilloscope by a factor of 10. Oscilloscopes have a relatively low input impedance compared to regular voltmeters, and they tend to load down your circuit, meaning I hook up my oscilloscope, it has a low impedance, so current flows through the oscilloscope. What happens when you have current taken from a circuit? The output impedance of that circuit causes the voltage to go down. Remember, whenever you have current going through a resistance or an impedance, you're going to have a higher voltage where the current enters and a lower voltage where it exits. So I start taking current out, my voltage will go down. It's just like trying to flush your toilet and take a shower at the same time. You can only get so much water in the house at a time, and so you try to do too much, your pressure goes down. In an electrical circuit, you try to take too much current, your voltage goes down. So if I'm using an oscilloscope that has too low of an input impedance, I'm actually affecting the circuit by measuring the circuit. So by using a times 10 probe, remember to set it in the times 10 setting, that not only reduces the voltage display so you can see bigger voltages, but even if you're in lower voltages, it reduces your circuit loading by increasing the impedance of the oscilloscope. Just remember, whenever you use a times 10 probe, you have to multiply your voltage base numbers by 10. 
Some oscilloscopes have a knob that has two markings on it so that for a times 10 probe you can see which mark it points to for times 10 and for times 1 you can see which mark to use for times 1. Some scopes even have probes that are sensed by the oscilloscope and it turns on a light which tells you which scale to use. But without something like that, remember to always multiply your voltage by 10 when you have your probe set to times 10. Makes sense. Times 10, times 10. So now this is 50 volts per division instead of 5 volts per division. Another thing to look at while we have the oscilloscope set up is the sweep delay. Some oscilloscopes have this and some don't. Many of them do. What this does is, as time goes by, our spot goes across the screen. What if something happens so late that, if you can imagine our spot going beyond the screen, it happens over here where we can't see it? Well, the sweep delay allows us to delay the triggering such that this starts late. Let me demonstrate what that does. I'm going to set it up for delayed sweep, and then let's turn this over to a 10 millisecond delay, and now let me adjust that, and you can see my whole wave is moving as I turn this adjustment. Let's put it back where we had it. So what this means is if there's something happening over here, I can turn this and bring it over. Think of it as your screen is able to slide back and forth across your signal. So if there's something over here, we can actually move our window over there to see it. And so there's our adjustment. There's zero delay. There's a little delay, there's more, there's more, there's more. Now, I don't have a signal to show you here, otherwise I could make a demonstration. But if there was something happening right here, like a little glitch, or something else happening, well, right now, we can't see it. But this brings it over in to where we can see it. So, we're able to see things that happen later. I wish I had something to show you that actually demonstrated that, but I actually don't have something, uh, some kind of signal that does that. So, just imagine that if... If something is happening too late for you to see, you can adjust this and go further and further down the wave until you can see whatever that anomaly is. Just don't have anything to show you at this point. But that's how the sweep delay works. And last but not least, I'm going to try before your very eyes a function of this scope that I've never tried. And that is the component test. Let me get a couple of uh, probes here to put in the, the component test banana sockets, and let's see what this does. I push this button, and what do we have there? Let's bring this over onto the screen. Uh, let's see, I'm going to take my signal out. We'll play with that in a minute. I don't think it's going to do anything for me, but right now I have this straight line. And just to see what happens, I'm going to put a diode across these probes. So here is a rectifier diode, and watch the screen, let's see what happens. Bingo! What does that look like? I'm going to make a slight adjustment to the right here. And what we see is a diode curve. Remember when a diode is forward biased, we get an exponential increase in current, but when it's reverse biased, we get no current. So if we look over here, this is the reverse bias side. This is the forward bias side, so reverse bias, we get no current. So our voltage is horizontal and our current is vertical. So I hook up the component to the scope and there we have it, a diode curve. Now let's do that with a transistor. I have a little 2N2222 here. Let's hook up one lead to the base and one lead to the emitter. And look at that. Now, that looks like a Zener diode. We have our forward bias here, but look, reverse bias, we have a breakdown voltage, just like a Zener diode. Well, most transistor base to emitter junctions act like a Zener diode. So that's perfectly normal. So once again, there's our forward bias curve. We get a cascade of current from the base to emitter junction, reverse bias, no current, no current, no current, then we hit the breakdown voltage and we get a sudden increase in current. If I flip that around, we can see that with the same orientation of our previous diode. There we go. So there's our forward bias to the right, reverse bias to the left. We get our cascade of current from our forward bias at about seven tenths of a volt. And then it looks like about, uh, oh, five, ten, looks like about 15 volts. We get a break, that should be more, on, more like around five volts. Hmm. 
Well, there it is. So we get our breakdown voltage, whatever voltage that happens to be. And if we go to our base to collector, it should just look like a regular diode. There it is. And we flip that around, it'll look like we're used to seeing it. Ta -da! So that gives us a look at a component. We can use a, do a quick component test and see if that diode looks like a diode or if that transistor looks like a transistor. Let's go ahead and put that signal back here just to see if that does anything for us. I kind of doubt it. Eh, there might be some use to that, but I don't think so. Anyway, that's the component test of this particular oscilloscope. That's not a common feature, but this particular scope has that. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible and a big thank you to everyone for watching.